Well, good morning. As you saw by the title, uh, we're gonna go do some fishy stuff today. We got a stolen vehicle recovery. It was actually another tow company that did the recovery with the sheriff's department and got the thing out of there when it was found. And then now we're gonna go pick it up from them and take it back to my customer who owns the thing. And uh, as you can see, we're in the Jeep because I don't have a tow truck big enough to tow this thing. So instead of me towing it, it's gonna tow me, kinda. But uh, first, we're gonna go get a car wash because when you're riding dirty, you gotta be clean. As you see, the Jeep's kind of a mess from some uh, off-road stuff we've been doing that I didn't film, so we're gonna fix that. Okay, now that we're all clean before we go do dirty things, uh, we're gonna head over and pick up a key to this thing so we had another key cut for it and uh, I looked at it yesterday and they did not punch out the ignition or hot wire or do anything like that so somehow they stole it with a key but either way we had one made up we're gonna go grab it then go pick up the truck and the plan is one hope it runs then hook this Jeep and the tow bar it has to the back of the box truck and then I drive the stolen box truck towing my Jeep behind 100 something miles, whatever it is, over to the customer's main repair shop so they can see what they need to do to get it back in service. And then I gotta hope I don't get pulled over somewhere in between and have to tell a really long story to an officer so that I don't get arrested for driving a stolen truck. So let's go do that. All right, we got our key and now we are in Sisters, Oregon and we are here. So next up is to Go get our truck out of truck jail and then hope it runs, then get the Jeep hooked up to it and then hopefully it makes it up over those Cascade Mountains to where we got to take it because that would suck if it didn't. Make sure we're not hauling any bodies or drugs or anything like this. Look, they mounted a winch to the front up there. Looks like they got some rollers here, so. Who knows what they were dragging in. There's a ramp that comes out, so they might have been dragging stuff in and out. All your classic burglary tools, rubber gloves. They don't care about, I'm sure. The virus, those are probably a bunch more for fingerprints. Gas cans for stealing fuel. Any women out there missing some shoes? Look, they mounted a winch to fiberglass and it lets you know the level of intelligence that we're dealing with here so okay nothing like too illegal looking in the back and the cops already went through it so so now on to the front and let's uh well let's, uh, hope our key works Here the gloves again trash bags more burglary tools, I'm sure. Okay, please start. All right, we have fuel. Two miles to empty. And we're two miles from a gas station, so. Hey, even left the phone charger. Hey, it's a command I use. Handy. So, I think what I'm gonna do is before I hook my Jeep to the back of this, I think I'm gonna drive it down to the gas station and fill it up. Um, yeah, before I have to have the Jeep hooked to the back flat telling it can't back up or anything. So well, let's give it a good walk around looking over and then uh, put top off on gas, then come back here and get the Jeep hooked up and then go on a road trip in a stolen truck. Okay, we're at the gas station now waiting to get filled up and the reason I keep saying this is a stolen truck is technically on paper it still is uh, when I came up here to get this yesterday I actually came thinking I was getting a different truck and then I showed up and this one was sitting there and we did some back to back and forth looking around and realized that the people who stole this stole multiple of them from the same customer of mine and uh, swap plates and VIN numbers all around between them so the sheriffs thought they had recovered a different truck and it ended up being 
this one. So on paper, the actual VIN number of this truck that we're in right now is still listed as stolen, and one that is actually still stolen and missing is listed as recovered. So we're straightening all that up with the sheriffs right now. Uh, they came out and verified everything in person, and uh, to get the customer their truck back as quick as possible, I'm just taking it back to them, and the sheriffs are working on getting the paperwork side of it swapped around so that it shows correct. Uh, so technically if anyone were to pull me over and run this actual truck, I think as of right now, it's still listed as stolen. And the other one that's out there somewhere is now listed as not, but I got a handy little get out of jail free card from the officer in charge of the investigation. So if I get pulled over, I'm gonna be really screwed for like 15 minutes and then it should all be okay after that, hopefully. All right, we got my Jeep hooked to the back. Uh, got some tow lights on the back here. The drive line's pulled so it'll free roll and uh, got it all ready to go, hooked up to the back of the maybe, maybe not stolen truck. And we're gonna head up on a road trip over the Cascades with it and see how it does. So big thanks to the people at Davis Towing. Um, very good people if you're ever up here in the Sisters area and need towed or tire changes, anything like that, or if you even need tires, because they, they do tires as well. Look up Davis Towing. Great people, very, very awesome to work with. So we're gonna get out of here on the road and see how this goes. And we're off. Make sure the Jeep's following along behind. And let's see how this goes. If anything, and this just is totally boring, no problem. There's plenty of cool stuff we'll explore on the way back with the Jeep, so. It'll be a fun day either way. Okay, decided to pull over, take a break, check everything out, make sure it's all going good, and uh, there's the Jeep, still here. So there, everything's good. Now let's go take a walk over here and check out the McKenzie River. One thing I really love about Oregon is stuff like this is just on the side of the road everywhere. Like, all over the place if you're looking for something to do you can just pull over and there'll be a trail a river a waterfall something and it's all just beautiful like look at this oh got a tree down backbone of a stream trees down tree down it's like nature describing nature to us oh man that'd be cool to see elk in the river and here is the McKinsey River Let's go look at it some more. I could hike around trails like this in these woods all day long. This is just awesome out here. Huh, hold up. The sinkhole. Oh, this looks super sketchy. Bad idea. Okay. All right. Okay, time to get down now before this falls because that's the kind of luck I have. Okay. Hey, I made it. Something actually worked out for once. All right. Okay, back out to the road and no one stole our stolen truck, so that's a bonus. Let's uh, get rolling again. See what else there is to see. Okay, we're in Blue River, Oregon. 
I think we're gonna pull over here, see if we can find us something to eat. I don't know what's here or not, or, but let's go see. Okay, I stopped there because it looked like they had a deli and like a chicken stand and all that in there, and uh, they did, but it all looks so gross that I ain't buying any of it. So luckily we have a fridge in the Jeep with some just in case Lunchables inside. So looks like lunch today is Lunchables. Let's get back on the road. Oh, that's a super not ideal spot to break down. Okay, we are down out of the mountains and just got into Springfield, Oregon. And then uh, got to go through Springfield and then into Eugene with this thing. And I would say this is the stretch where we're most likely to have a problem with this whole stolen truck thing because this truck doesn't have any plates on it. Uh, the, the plates were all doctored up and the numbers painted over and wasn't even for this truck. So uh, the sheriffs who found it took them. So there's no plates on the front or on the back and it definitely looks like a painted up stolen truck. So like I said, this is our probably most likely problem spot. We'll see. Okay, we crossed the bridge and we are in Eugene. So as long as we don't get pulled over in the next two minutes, it looks like we made it scot-free. Okay, we are unloaded out of there and back in the Jeep with no problems at all. Uh, luckily, I didn't have any issues with that truck and getting spotted anywhere or pulled over, which probably would have made a whole lot better video if I would have got pulled over, but I would much rather have a job go super smooth and no problems at all than have it turn into a big disaster and a drama fest just for the sake of video. So, good thing everything went fine and now we're gonna head back through Springfield Go find second lunch and then uh, back over the Cascades. And now that we're just in the Jeep and not a big ass truck pulling a Jeep, we can go explore a couple little more off the side of the road things. Okay, here is our first stop on the get home tour. And it is the Good Pasture Covered Bridge in Vida, Oregon, or Vida, Oregon, or I'm not sure which way is the correct way to say that, so I say it both ways. That way I for sure get it wrong. I'm sure someone will come on here and correct me, but. Check this thing out. We'll pull over here and get out and take a look at it, but isn't this cool? Good Pasture Bridge. It was built in 1938 and then it was rebuilt in 1980 and uh, then listed on the National Register of Historic Places. And uh, it's rated for 44 tons, that's crazy. But I guess when they rebuilt it, it probably strengthened it up a good bit. And uh, again, the reason I know all that stuff is because they put an information sign right here and I just read it. So let's uh, walk down underneath, see what it looks like down there. Cause 44 tons is crazy high for the way this thing looks from above. Well, I mean, it is actually still wood framed. I mean, the, the supports are steel and the beams are concrete, but your actual, oh, your actual runner beams are wood and these ones look like they're ready to fall out. That whole thing moves when a car drives across it. That's nuts. Well, I'm quite surprised. It actually is a wooden bridge underneath. I thought maybe when they rebuilt it. I thought maybe when they rebuilt it, they might have done it out of, you know, steel beams and all that. And that's why it's got such a high rating, but it's actual wood frame bridge. Interesting. Yep. It is just as impressive from over here. This is the McKenzie River again like where we stopped and checked out earlier. Whoa, it's just way farther to the west downstream. And we're gonna follow it basically back up into the Cascades and then head over, what the heck, into Sisters where we started and then back down home to Bend. Okay, so there's a misconception that covered bridges 
were built to make it so horses and livestock weren't scared to cross bridges and that's not exactly true that is a side benefit but horses cross bridges they don't care um, the reason bridges were covered is to protect the trusses and structure of them to make them last longer so all, like this bridge here if you notice all the trusses are inside the covered shell that protects them from the elements especially somewhere like here in oregon on this side of the cascades where it's really wet and rainy and you can get a lot of rot and stuff like that so the horse thing and livestock thing is a side benefit hey the bridge is broken someone should look into that that is a side benefit to it but the real reason is to cover all these big trusses so that the bridge lasts longer Man, this whole bridge shakes when someone crosses it but these are super cool you do a little dusting got some cobwebs going on imagine building something like this in a single span there's no supports under the water it's a single span over the river in 1938 that is just wild oh got hot rod okay back in the jeep and while i'm messing around with chargers and cords and all that uh how's the audio sound on this video comment down below what you think of it you see i'm using a wireless well wired lav mic setup that was going down my shirt to this wireless transmitter that then wirelessly transmits it to this receiver on the camera that then wired transmits it in to the camera so it should sound pretty good let me know what you think it better sound pretty good because it is a pain and uh i haven't actually checked out yet to see what it sounds like but we'll figure it out in a minute i'm gonna be super mad if i go to edit this whole video and it's just silent okay change of plans uh we were heading back over santium pass uh just like normal and then uh I realized the scenic bypass is open. It's only open a few months out of the year because the rest of the time it's covered in snow. And I've never been this way, so we're going this way. So this road we're going over, over the Cascade Mountains, uh, is now known as the Scenic Bypass to the McKenzie Highway. And like I said, it's only open a few months out of the year when it's not covered in snow. And it was pioneered in 1862 by a guy named uh, Felix Scott. And he used it to try to haul supplies from the coast to the gold mines over in Idaho. Um, but in 1868 or so, uh, a uh, easier route was found which is now the mckenzie highway is what you normally drive on over and this road was basically abandoned until now it's the scenic bypass and this area right here where we are was called summit prairie or is called summit prairie and they called it summit prairie because it got up here and flattened out they thought it was the summit but it wasn't it actually goes up many thousands of feet higher because we're at about five thousand feet now and the actual summit to this pass is a few thousand feet higher than this and the summit to the mountains is up closer to 10 11 000 feet and this is another one of those things where i know all this stuff because i put a nice sign right here saying so so i'm on the moon now as you can see this is a giant lava flow and it goes for whoa that's a big split there it goes way up to that volcano peak up there uh i can't remember the name i'm blanking on it just on the other side of that is mount washington 
and directly behind us here like right right there but we can't see it because these trees are in the way is uh north sister then broken top south sister and so on the jeep is right down there next to the road but this is a massive lava flow and is this a bad idea yep oh okay this is crazy We're up uh, 5,500, 6,000 feet elevation probably right now. It's wild out here. And this just goes all the way up to that and then off the other side of it too. I want to explore all of it, but I can't today. So now I gotta jump back across that stupid crack and this time it's uphill. Oh, I guess I can walk around it. And then uh, we'll go find some more to look at. This is crazy. It goes way off up that way too. So we're up the mountain a little farther now and hike up uh, the road just a little bit. The road is literally right below us, but we're in this clearing now. And back in the 1860s, there was a cabin in this clearing and it was used by the people who traveled back and forth over this pass. And to back up some where I told you back there that this was pioneered in 1862, and in 1868, the McKinsey Pass Road, the much easier one, was opened. Well, the McKinsey Pass one was pioneered and being built by a man named John Templeton Craig. And he was the mailman who carried the mail from McKinsey Bridge down at the bottom on the west side over to Camp Polk, which is near Sisters. And he got caught in a really bad winter storm carrying the Christmas mail over the Cascades. And he was later found by a search party frozen to death with all the mail in that cabin that used to stand right here. And then they buried him here on this knoll to always be looking over these mountains. So this is his final resting place on the mountain that he made his living. Just crazy, crazy life people lived back then. Some very, very tough individuals. Okay, now we're back into this lava flow. And I just realized that uh, I actually have some parts that I picked up for another customer of mine from Eugene. I was supposed to take back over and drop off to him on my way home. And uh, all my little side tracks and scenic bypasses now. Look at this. There is no way I'm making it back before they close today. So, sorry guys. You're gonna have to wait till tomorrow to get your parts. But I mean, yeah, you can wait. I've got exploring to do. Check that out. This is the D-Wright Observatory. And it's something I really want to check out, but I'm going to wait until I come back out with my family because they want to check it out too, and I don't want to check it out without them. So, And there are trails all over. This is amazing. Then fast forward a little bit, and just like that, we're back out here in the desert. So that means that is it for this video. That's another one that is a little bit of towing and a lot of bit of exploring. And I think I really like that direction of the video, so expect to see a whole lot more of that. Um, but like I said, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed that because I did, which is why I'm gonna keep doing it. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.